In this screencast, we will discuss ovarian torsion. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to recognize and describe the findings of ovarian torsion and realize the role the Doppler ultrasound plays in assessing for ovarian torsion. The findings of ovarian torsion are similar whether you are looking for it on ultrasound, CT, or MRI. The first thing you should be looking for is asymmetric ovarian enlargement. A torsed ovary becomes edematous due to ischemia and decreased venous drainage and will enlarge relative to the other ovary. The next thing you should look for is an abnormally positioned ovary. The ovary should sit lateral to the uterus along the pelvic sidewall, and if you see it anterior to the uterus, posterior to the uterus, or on top of the uterus, that may mean it is torsed around the vascular pedicle. When the ovary torses, the lack of blood flow or decreased blood flow can also cause edema of the pedicle and engorgement of the vessels within the vascular pedicle. And so the vascular pedicle will enlarge and people often talk about what they call a whirlpool sign or swirling of the ovarian vessels within that vascular pedicle. Ovarian torsion is thought to need a predisposing adhesion um, some sort of inflammation of the fallopian tube related to an infection or prior surgery that allows the ovary to torse around the tube. And when the ovary torses and twists the tube, it's felt to also cause deviation of the uterus away from midline. As ovarian torsion becomes more severe or has been present for a longer period of time, you may also develop hemorrhage within the ovarian stroma and oftentimes you can develop hemorrhage within follicles or cysts within the ovary. And that gets to the last point. In most cases of ovarian torsion, you will see some cyst or mass present in the affected ovary. In many cases, that mass or cyst is a predisposing factor that causes the ovary to move or become abnormally positioned and therefore torse. But in some cases, torsion of the ovary causes enlargement of the follicles and hemorrhage within the follicles. Now let's take a look at a case of a 25-year-old woman presented with pelvic pain. She received a CT in the emergency room, and on CT we saw an ovary positioned anterior to the uterus with two large cysts. The white arrow points to the ovarian stroma, which is thicker than you would expect for an ovary. Also note slight uterine deviation. Because of the suspicious location of the ovary, an ultrasound was performed. Note that the ultrasound did show a somewhat hypovascular ovary, meaning not good blood flow is detectable within that triangular area of soft tissue between the two cysts, but arterial blood flow was detected. And in most cases of ovarian torsion that I have seen, some blood flow is detectable. When you think about torsion and impingement of the vessels, the ovary does have dual blood supply, so often there is still some arterial supply that's able to perfuse the ovary, uh, and oftentimes there's still some degree of venous drainage. You may see initially some increase in the resistive index as it's more difficult for the ovary to drain. Eventually you may see no venous blood flow or waveform, and in the most severe forms of torsion you will lose arterial flow as well. But realize abnormalities in blood flow are very specific for torsion. You can be very confident that there is torsion if you see abnormal blood flow. But normal blood flow does not exclude torsion. Blood flow is not sensitive for torsion. Here are MRI images just giving us a little more detail of this last case of torsion. So here we can see uh, with the open arrow, the uterus, which is deviated toward the right away from the torsed ovary. We can see the open arrowhead, which is showing an edematous pedicle. So this is actually the fallopian tube and the ovarian vessels or the meso-ovarium, and it is edematous due to the torsion. Also note it has sort of a conical shape, sometimes described as a knuckle, 
and possibly if you scrolled through it in a coronal plane or with an ultrasound, you would see swirling of the vessels. In addition, we see layering hemorrhage within one of the cysts, and one of the cysts is not T2 hyperintense as would be expected with a simple cyst. Therefore, this is a hemorrhagic cyst, and the layering hemorrhage suggests an acute hemorrhagic component. Here we have another case of a patient presenting with acute pelvic pain and had a complex mass detected on ultrasound further characterized with MRI. We can see with the open arrowhead a complex mass made up of fat, fluid, and solid components consistent with a teratoma. This teratoma was the predisposing mass for this patient's torsion. We can see that the ovary is eccentrically located posterior to the uterus. The, uter the ovarian stroma is also very T2 hypo-intense. On T1 pre-contrast imaging, we see that the stroma is hyper-intense or iso-intense to skeletal muscle and that it does not enhance. This is concerning for ischemia and hemorrhage, and we can confirm that there is hemorrhage on our DWI as there is DWI hypointensity and ADC hypointensity consistent with dephasing from blood products within the ovarian stroma. We can also see that the uterus is deviated contralateral to the torsion and the ovary is clearly located in the rectouterine pouch posterior to the uterus. In summary, ovarian torsion tends to present with severe acute pelvic pain. I first want you to look for asymmetric enlargement of the ovary and also note if the ovary is abnormally positioned. Remember blood flow can be normal. Lack of blood flow or abnormal blood flow is highly specific but not sensitive. A cyst or a mass is commonly present in the setting of torsion, oftentimes being a predisposing mass, but sometimes being the result of hemorrhage within a follicle or cyst.